Creepings everybody and welcome back to another episode of Serious Keywords Adventures and Project Ozone 2 Titan Mode. I did a few things off camera again, hopefully not too much. Uh, I like to kind of limit myself to what I do off camera, but there's some motonous, motonous? Some boring stuff that I like to do off camera. Um, let's talk about seeds. I grew some draconium seeds. They're all 10, 10, 10. So now we get, yep, draconium ore. Nice. So we can use that in the future. I also made some experience seeds because I wanted to enchant my armor and such. I have like protection three and uh, sorry, protection four and an unbreaking three on all of them. But I didn't have a good way to get experience before I use kind of like a bug. I think that was with the uh, with the uh, botania ring, not with the draconic evolution magnet. I I don't remember, but there was a bug where if experience points are behind my mob farm glass. Um, then I could like get infinite amount of XP somehow. It would keep okay. increasing without actually decreasing the experience points behind it. So, but I don't have that anymore, so I don't get experience easily. I do have a huge bedrockium drum with lots of mob essence. Um, there is a way normally to convert mob essence into um, into uh, it was a liquid experience from open blocks, but the the way to do this in here is, I think, disable. I, th I don't think we are able to do that. So, um, if you know a way of converting essence into um, liquid experience points in this mod pack, keep in mind things are different here. And on Titan mode, might also be different. Then please let me know. Only if you know. Don't guess, because guessing doesn't help. I am already guessing. It's not working. But yeah. Um, at the same time, I also added a tree farm over here. A pretty <laughs> basic one. Uh, just getting some jungle wood because why not? I had it. And I also started to pump out all of the sludge we're getting now from all these machines that do produce sludge. And I moved this all down here. I put this far away because this uh, sludge boiler here is a little bit annoying. But it takes the sludge from the tank and it converts it into all kinds of different blocks. I don't think I can see here what it does, but um, it gives you, like, for example, potzel. Can we see? The recipe for that somehow sludge boiler there you go yeah you get some random blocks from this and uh it could be useful right so might as well do it and it just pumps it into my inner chest so uh that's been going for a while as well i upgraded our uh crafting system a little little bit added more recipes um added all speed upgrades and uh a bunch more patterns here as well for uh, certain things and I also automatic or automated the uh, the those processor crafting thingies here, and also the uh, crystal chambers. It's pretty easy with these advanced inscribers for my E2 stuff, because you, well, excuse me, there's a loud car outside. Uh, you can keep these items in here locked, and have whole stacks in there and such. Um, but basically, each of these is taking care of one specific processor, right? They just have uh, interfaces at the bottom here with the recipe inside, so that way they can export it into the machine if I need it. And then they pull it out at the top. And then the last one here just combines them all uh, for the all three different processors. So this one has all these uh, recipes for that. And then the crystal chamber next to it has the pure uh, Certus Quartz crystal and the pure Flux crystal. So not, nothing super fancy. Added some over here as well, just for Skystone and stuff. Things I needed for uh, Th uh, certain like you know items I wanted to craft so like the patterns for example we can make uh, or I mean the uh, you know those uh, what I call it, storage components for like more more uh, storage and then also cable uh, smart cable dense smart cable do I have dense th this is small I didn't add the dense one yet I guess unless I'm blind I can do that eventually so that's been pretty cool it's been uh, helping me out a lot and I finally upgraded this wireless uh, crafting terminal to this one here. Um, it's pretty easy, like all these components are pretty easy. It needs two of these 64k, that's one of the main reasons why I wanted auto crafting, because it's so much easier. And it also needs a singularity. The singularity, uh, we can quickly go over that. We'll need it in the future and then I'll explain a little bit better how they work. But basically you make this matter condenser from AE2 and you put a 64k storage component here. And on this side you have to switch it to Emmy condenser, and then you just feed it items. In my case, I use our cobblestone generator we had here to feed in cobblestone, and then when it gets um, 
or it says here 256,000 items. If it destroyed that many, it produces one singularity. So this has been <laughs> running for a while and we have a full stack of them now, which uh, I don't know if we'll need them in the future, but I saw they are used in some crazy recipes, so we might as well have them. And then if you shift right click this, or actually just right click, I added that infinity boost cap we found. I don't remember where we got this from, but we got this a while ago actually. And this one lets us use this thing in anywhere in any dimension. So we don't have to, uh, we don't actually need this like range thing anymore. So we can just go to like the nether or something and still access our inventory system. And it actually comes with a crafting grid as well, which is pretty awesome. It also has this magnet cat, uh, card and if you activate this, it um, you can specify like, you know, white list or blacklist, but basically all items that are specified will go directly into the AE system. So it's kind of cool. It's not a real magnet that goes into your inventory, but it goes into the AE system. So that works as well. If I go over to my mining dimension, so I I did try out this new farming station, right? The AgriCraft farming station. And we um, forgot how to do the numpad three. There it is, <laughs> the recipe. Um, we needed these crazy farming base modules um, to, to do this, and that's why we built that um, capacitor farm in the in the uh, last millennium. So I finally used them up and, you know, to try this out, because this is supposedly um, able to crossbreed crops for you. And I tried this with these dye seeds here, just for fun. And I have installed the seed analyzer, so it automatically analyzes the seeds here. And I installed the breeding module, which says uh, we'll plant seeds and cross crops in a uh, checker pattern to allow these or the plants to breed with each other. I also tried the crossbreed. I don't know if I should use that one. I have the crossbreed module as well, but it seemed to be even worse. I'm not sure. And then I have the seed harvesting module, so it harvests the whole seed and not just the crop itself, right? And this has been running several days. It ran out of crop sticks multiple times, and I used up so many crop sticks. In fact, I have a way down here to craft crop sticks, uh, crop sticks and I had so many. And it has barely made any progress. Like what I can tell here, it also dumped a bunch of these into the output slot. 333 three, three seems to be the highest I got. Um, I don't know, maybe I'm not using this right. If you know how to use this properly to just crossbreed so I get them to 10, 10, 10, let me know. But I can crossbreed 10, 10, 10 myself in like five minutes. So if, if, you know, I mean, it would help me with like, you know, taking away some work from me, but if it takes several days, then I'll just do it myself. It's a lot faster. And in fact, I have to do it for the experience points ones as well. They're still not. They just one one once. So that's kind of unfortunate. Okay, so there's a few things I want to try out. Um, let's start with the cell workbench. So the cell workbench lets you kind of specify what can go onto this storage cell. And I would like to use this to use some of these seeds and or byproducts rather, because we do compress them in here. So we don't need the the actual like seeds or what do you call them crops whatever you get from these things but the the products they produce and write this onto a specific disc right so we get like steel dark steel minicia essence all these things here i don't know why what i should do with all these with our essence and i don't know how i did get twenty seven thousand vines i really have no idea how many how i got these uh that's a little bit strange I don't have nature essence. Maybe, hmm. <laughs> I am honestly not sure how I got these. But yeah, uh, so I kind of want to do this real quick. Okay, I just have a few. Can I shift click? Yes. So we can just do this, right? We can specify what should go onto this drive. Uh, can we do partition storage? Oh. That was, okay, that was like loading it, I guess. I was wondering if we can increase the priority on this directly. Controls if the contents of the configuration pane are cleared when you remove the cell. Okay. So this one says partition now. If I put it in, we can see this. Cool. And I guess I should make a chest actually. An uh, applied energistic chest. Okay. So that's that. And can I just hook this up here? I don't have any 
No, I don't have any cables over here. Uh, so let's hopefully put it up here. Maybe that works. Yeah, we can specify the priority here so we can make this highest priority and put this in here. Okay, so every time we get stuff now from this farm, and I could actually just let this run because it should be fine. It should go into this thing now and we can also check this if you access an ME chest from the top where you see the grid, you can see what's inside and you can see it's already stuffed there. So that's cool. So we can do that. So that way it won't like fill up our system in here and we can have because we don't need more than 64 types right right now um or 63 types but this one because the 64k drive it will be able to store a lot of each item so that should be fine okay another thing that i would like to work on and i mentioned earlier is that we don't have a good experience points farm and actually did i interrupt myself when i was talking about that i'm not sure but um we do have these essence uh, berry, not essence berry, but experience point seeds uh, plants now, right? And we get this concentrated essence berry. Um, did I mention that I... I think I talked about how these give more in total, right? Oh god, I can't remember. I might edit this out if I already did this. Let me check. Because you can make the bottles, you get four of them, but you can also make them like this, and they get the essence berry, and these seem to give a little bit more, even though they use one item more. I think this seems to be more efficient. Maybe I said that already. <laughs> I'm sorry. A um, little bit scared of brain today. But I want to set up a system here. And I guess I'll... Mm, do I put this over here? I mean, you know, it's still completely not planned out here, this base. Let's actually turn on the magnet. I, I mentioned before that I had some ideas for a base. But I might actually wait until we create our own world and then just build it there might be a little bit better but i want to set up a system where i can automatically get these essence berries into experience points form and we can use this um experience obelisk from endio and this one like can take your levels from you or you can uh, give yourself the levels and this one accepts an input from the vacuum hopper but i don't want to directly hook this up so i'm gonna use some fluid conduits here i need to build this far away the the thing i'm about to build because i don't want my magnet to be able to interfere with this thing um so but i also don't want, want it to be too far away there's eight blocks range here is this eight one two three four five six seven eight uh yeah it might be okay i don't want this to be too far away either because i have to run some cables down here but we should be able to do um this and then say output experience liquid at the top uh, and then say auto extract uh yeah we can leave this on how many levels do we have right now let's actually just take them all out so we can easily see if it's working or not and i don't have any blocks on me not a problem let's get some i guess stone bricks huh we always build in stone bricks I'm just going to build, like, a, it doesn't really need much, right? I'm just going to suck it up in here. These vacuum hoppers are pretty cool in general, but I uh, don't really need it for anything else at the moment. So let's put down an add a Thomas activator. And we use this one to, let's see, we want to do this. This is, uh, I don't know which side this is. Yeah, that's perfect. We're going to use this to crush down the essence berries into xp and then this hopper will pick them up as experience points and i should be able to hook up do we have a channel left over here nope that's eight channels okay so that should be it already so we have an import bus here um uh, sorry export bus and we should be able to just grab now the essence like one of them and say yep export this and I'll probably have some acceleration cards. Oh, I do. Cool. Not that I really need to. Okay, that's going in here now. We say right click and always active. And I'll turn off my magnet. Okay. Um, do we have to go one further down? I wonder. Maybe sneak right click. There we go. Okay, so you can see the it's breaking up the experience points. The uh, those bar. Uh, uh, berries and if i go away i don't collect them and they should all go into this vacuum hopper and this should pull out the liquid now into this thing so this should fill up yep with experience awesome 
And then I can, every time I need one, I can just come over here and say, oh, I need 20, 30 levels, right? And then dump it in again. Awesome. And make this a little bit prettier here again. Bam. And we also have the enchanter here, so right next to it. Cool. And apparently that was a quest. Oh yeah, making the XP obelisk. And <laughs> we get some bottles. Okay. I'll take the essence, I guess. Okay, I think what I would like to do now, I have a couple of things that I want to do, but uh, I think the next step for me is going to the end. I think I want to go there and kill the dragon. It should be, should be a big problem here. And I also just thought, now that we have like this um, chest up there with just the crop stuff, we should do the same for everything we get from this machine. Well, maybe not. I'm actually thinking, because, like, okay, here's the thing, right? <laughs> These, um, and maybe there's a way, maybe you guys know about this, maybe there is a way, but one issue I always have with uh, applied energistic storage is that, unfortunately, there's no way, in my, to my knowledge, to, wait, why are there only, oh, no, no, they're filling up, wow, it's so fast, uh, there's no, like, way to get rid of excessive stuff, right? So, let's say, I have too much in this drive, right, and I can't put more in there, it will just try to dump it somewhere else then. Where with the storage drawers, you can have the void upgrades and say, okay, if it's full and you dump in more stuff, it just deletes it. And in fact, in 1.10, Minecraft 1.10, there's the mod called Refined Storage, which is basically a... I don't know if clone is the fair word here, but it's pretty much a clone of Applied Energistics. And in that one, it actually does have drives where you can say, clear all the excessive stuff so that would be pretty pretty useful because then i would use it for like all the ores here as well because i don't i want to be able to let this run for hours and days without having to worry about filling my drives right so maybe having a huge wall full of storage drawers fully upgraded always void upgrades might be the better way to do it and then just hook up a storage bus so that the ae system can see it yeah that might be a better way to do it but uh, let's go to the end. Uh, what One thing I want to bring with me here are these syringes. Now, I have personally have never used these in um, with RF tools. But basically what you can do with them is you can uh, extract the essence from mobs. And uh, you can use it as a, as a dimlet workbench to make a dimlet out of it, right? Because so you can create a world um, that has like dragon mobs inside and I, I don't know if that's going to be super useful but i've seen people do that and there must be a, there must be a reason for that so i'm just going to bring one get a bit of uh and a dragon blood and to get to the end i think we need the end cake which i already made pretty easy to do we have a ton of cake from our mob farm and of course we need some eye of enders to fill the cake and that's how we get there so let's just put this over here to where we have all the other teleporters and stuff. Do we bring anything else, though? I can teleport back if something goes weird. Oh, you know what I should do? I should make a bow. And I was thinking about this. My crossbow isn't the greatest, right? Maybe we should try this bow of the Vyvern. Uh, I've never used it. And it might be awesome. There we go. And I should charge up in our inventory. Do we have arrows in here? We do. Oops. Does it say how much damage it is? Base damage 2. And you can upgrade it somehow. Oh, the power goes up. Interesting. Oh, those are weird looking arrows. Okay, well, we just try it out. Okay, and I think we just fill these with Eye of Enders and it replaces the cake. And there it is. And that should be... Yep, can take a bite. And we go to the end. <laughs> and that probably won't be a huge issue. Screenshot! Maybe not the greatest screenshot. Ah, uh, will do. Alright, so let's get the syringe out first of all. Um, I'll let you... How do... I think I punch him. I should have brought something that makes me fly a little bit faster. Yeah, and we can see the syringe filling up. Oh, come back. Come back here. That's a lot of crystals. This is more than usual. Okay, that one is full. And I'm gonna get a second one just in case I mess something up. We can respawn this dragon, so it's not a huge issue. Um, but you know, if you have it, you have it, so get yeah, there you go. Cool. Alright, let's get rid of some of these crystals. 
Whoa, that arrow was like flying sideways. All right, I think that's all of them. Um, so let's see, if I charge this fully up, it's really hard to hit him though, I did though. Oh, no, you know, I probably should have enchanted this bow. <laughs> no, I'll think about this. Not that I have to, I just want to see how it does. All right, let's go finish this. <laughs> it is so silly. Oh yeah, we have this heart. That's for Draconic Evolution. Cool. We get a bunch of Draconium as well. Nice, and there's a Dragon Egg. I don't know what we can do with this. Uh, no recipe found, of course. Yeah, I want to look up if it's used for something. Can we use it for like energy or something? Our sundial. Okay, and covers. Let's make covers out of it. Well, we'll bring this one home. Cool. So what did we get? We got another one of these infinity boosters. We got an epic shader. Okay. We got the dragon heart. Again, I'm using a texture pack, so it looks different for you, maybe. Probably, 100%. And did that do anything? No. Okay. And a ton of enemy. I just want to see what else there is. Um, I think if you fly out, you get to these draconic... Uh, islands. Oh, there's Draconium Ore here. Okay. Not that I need it. Oh, Minisio. Oh, cool. I didn't know that. That just grows here. There's more of this. Uh, Enerlys. Don't need that. We can make Ender Pearls. Is there anything else? I think I've seen a chance cube somewhere. Yep, there's one over there. Invisible gas. Oh, I hate these guys. Okay. That's fun. Um, and let's see, is there actually some of these crystals done? There's our platform. I don't know if you have biomes or plenty in this. I think they usually have these crystals down here then. No, I don't think we have that in here. I'm not sure. I could look it up, but I'm lazy. See, now that we have the dragon heart, we can actually make this awakened draconium ore, or nugget, or ingot, whatever, and then make the Avanti, Avaritia, whatever table, to do these crazy crafting recipes. I have no clue how exactly this works, but I just read the book and it sounds like we need to get Draconium blocks and then charge them. Alright, so drop the Dragon Heart on the ground and activate it with an explosion. Drop 4 to 16 Draconic cores on the ground, 4 pair charged Draconium ore, and then you place uh, up to 4 Draco charged Draconic blocks near the heart and then after a while something should happen so okay so I have 16 of these draconic cores let's get a little bit of TNT I think maybe tiny TNT works <laughs> we'll try if not I'll, I'll bring some some other TNT um, and these are all charged now cool actually maybe I should pro I should probably bring proper TNT right now before I mess this up let's just do that uh, I'll try the tiny one though because the tiny one doesn't destroy items I believe Okay, and I'm guessing we can do that anywhere, right? Uh, I think the tiny one doesn't blow up stuff. We, we just tried here. Although I don't know if the ritual itself blows stuff up. Okay, let's go to... To the deep dark. Alright, we'll just do it right here. Alright, I'll turn off my magnet, because, you know, don't want to mess that up. Okay, I'll get the dragon heart. Tiny TNT. Do you just, uh, I just drop it, right? Okay, get the lever, and then I toss 16 of these into it. It just consumes, and it will consume any items you toss at it, so you gotta be careful. And let's double check real quick. When do I place those blocks? Uh, always good to read. Now, okay. A few seconds after its initial activation, it will draw all nearby items towards it. Anything that is not a draconic core will be destroyed. Now, quickly place one to four charged draconium blocks near it. You will know it's working when you see the heart's energy targeting the charged draconium blocks. Okay. Well, let's try it out. Let's do that. That did not work. Okay. <laughs> Aha. That looks a little bit better. Uh, so we dropped these 16. And then after it consumed them, okay, there you go. And then I do 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 maybe. Yeah, particles are going into it. I think we're doing it right. Are they changing color? No, it looks a little bit like they were turning red or something. 
Ooh, it's going crazy. Are you gonna explode or something? You are. Aha! Cool. There it is. Awakened Draconian Blocks. Yeah, with those ingots, we can also upgrade all the tools now and such. Cool armor. I need to upgrade my armor soon, actually. And also get these Awakened Cores, which you need in a couple of recipes. There's also an advanced flux capacitor, so that's cool. And you can use it as a tool. Awesome. Alright, and we are crafting our dire crafting table, which will take a while. And we are out of time anyway, so we will probably check it out next time. I don't know if there's any recipe at this point, uh, or at this moment that I want to check out at all with this table. But uh, might as well, uh, if there's anything. Didn't complete any quest though, crafting this stuff, unfortunately. Uh, but hey, just, you know, like a little update, we are getting pretty, well, not close, but we are past um, half of the quest already. We have 302 completed quests out of 522, so that's pretty awesome. But yeah, um, yeah, I will have to end the episode here. It's not super slow, but, you know, it will, it will take time. So, hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Thanks all for watching, and I'll see you guys soon. Bye-bye.